Yes, I'm Tiffany Hanna, and I am the travel coordinator for the 50 plus department here at JCPRD. Uh, we also uh, have several other folks with us today. We have Lisa Eagle, who is a coordinator uh, in the 50 plus department, as well as Mallory Ozier, who's a coordinator in the 50 plus department. And then we have Mary McMurray with us from the Arts and Heritage Center. So I think we're um, First of all, we're all really happy to be here. So thank you for letting us come and chat about some of the services that Johnson County Park and Recreation provide. So uh, I'll turn it over to Mary if she wants to get started. Mary, you're, uh, there you go. Great, thanks Tiffany. And yeah. thank you everyone for having us come to visit. It's nice to see some, some, some familiar faces and some new ones as well. Um, I'm Mary McMurray, historian uh, and director of the Johnson County Museum. I am a native to the area, fifth generation of my family in St. Joseph, Missouri. I uh, got my history degrees from MU, UMKC, and um, KU for the doctorate. I feel like I must have attended something at JCCC. I'm trying to remember which class I would have taken in my many experiences, um, but I certainly love your beautiful campus and I'm grateful for an opportunity to share a little bit about the Johnson County Museum with you all. First up on that sharing is for me to screen share. So give me just a second to not show you my email. Um, all right, let's see, view, slideshow from the beginning. There we go. Uh, so if you aren't already familiar, um, well, first of all, I guess we could ask, have you all been to the Johnson County Museum? Yes. Yes. That is wonderful. Well, Anita, I believe we have met there once in front of the yeah. All Electric House. Yeah. And it's Jerry's a ringer job. in the bunch. For those of you who don't know, he's a member of our um, board of directors for the Johnson County Museum Foundation. So we're lucky to have him as part of our leadership here. Uh, so, oops, excuse me. The Johnson County Museum is really a cultural jewel right here at home. Uh, it opened in 1967 in the old Greenwood School in Shawnee. And in 2017, it moved here to the um, old King Louis building and began operating as part of the Arts and Heritage Center of JCPRD. Uh, we share stories and artifacts and lessons from 165 years of our county's history uh, with a collection that's made up of items largely donated by community members just like you. Uh, our collection has 1.3 million photographs, 20,000 objects, and over 300 cubic feet of archival material. Um, I don't think I can do a presentation without trying to do a giveaway. And so I have one free family pass for, to bring um, your family to the Johnson County Museum to anyone in the audience, except for Jerry, sorry, Jerry, um, who's a ringer in the group to tell us what is the largest artifact in the Johnson County Museum's collection. Linda, I saw your hand go up. You can unmute and try and tell us what the largest one is. The electric house? You are correct. Linda, I'm gonna ask you to please private message me your address and I'll make sure you get this free family pass to bring yourself or a friend to the Johnson County Museum with their family. Uh, the all electric house is indeed our largest artifact. It's so fun to say that we have a house inside the museum. Uh, it was built in 1953 by Kansas City Power and Light as a research project and show house to show all the cool technology that electricity can bring to you, including an electric heat pump. And it has five rooms and it's 1500 square feet that was originally located on Homestead Street in Prairie Village, just between 63rd and Row. That's the Indian Hills, uh, I'm sorry, Indian Fields subdivision. When it opened to the public in 1954 as a show house, people lined up to come see it. More people saw it than was the population of Johnson County. And it was advertised as your doorway to tomorrow, to better living today, the electric way. Um, I have to tell you, I am the granddaughter of a VP of an electric company. And so there's just so, I grew up with Ready Kilowatt in my life. Um, and so it's just so fun to think of advertising in the 50s um, through this house with some of those very same themes that happened um, that I saw in my family. Uh, the house cost about $51,000 to build. Now, of course, that's 1950s money. Uh, and it sold for... $33,750, so a little bit of a loss there. Um, it did not sell for that for the last family that owned it. That was the fifth family. There were five families that lived there and it continued to appreciate over time. Uh, in 1994, the owners of the home uh, realized that they needed just a bigger home on the lot. So they were gonna get rid of this house, but they knew they had a historic 
um, home on their hands. They had paperwork that showed all the history of it. They had even the um, inventory of what was stocked in the house when it was open to a show house. All of these records are there. And so they approached the Johnson County Museum with the idea of taking a house into the collection. Uh, boy, am I glad that my predecessor said yes to this um, because what a cool artifact that we have. The museum then got into um, uh, updating it to make it look like the past, uh, to restore the house. And uh, it opened outside of our location in Shawnee. Uh, that was eight miles from its original location. And then in 2016, we moved it again. And my favorite thing about that move is that the side of this building that we're in right now was off of the building. And someone on a truck backed this house into the building and dropped it off for what is now, uh, we will consider a permanent location for as long as I can imagine, because I don't want to figure out the logistics of driving this thing out of a building. So uh, it was pretty amazing. And it's always been interpreted as 1954 um, family during that time period. But just this last month, we did the first ever at the Johnson County Museum, which is to decorate the all electric house for Passover. We set the table for Seder dinner with help from the congregate, congregation B'nai Yehuda. Um, and they also brought some items from the Klein Collection, which is a beautiful um, uh, collection that they have there and three items related to Passover are on display outside of the house. And so this is part of our overall goal, which is to tell a more diverse and inclusive history of Johnson County. And it requires partnerships. It requires help from people just like you. Um, it requires listening, which I'm not doing a lot of right now, but would anytime you want to come out to visit. And um, it just requires seeing our, our collection and history in new ways. Um, this house is just one part of our award-winning signature exhibit, which is Becoming Johnson County. And it's such a cool exhibit because you can come here and teach stories about our national histories from westward um, expansion and Civil War, World War II. Uh, we can also tell histories of the story of suburbia and how it developed. Uh, but what my favorite part is about the museum is that it tells the stories of individual Johnson Countyans, housewives, real estate agents, ministers who helped make Johnson County the county that it is today, one of our nation's leading counties. And in my mind, it helps us bring us to the ultimate goal of the museum, which is to build a better Johnson County. We can engage every person who comes through here and tell them, look, Mrs. Schechner helped make Johnson County what it is. Mr. and Mrs. Barkley helped make Johnson County what it is. What will you do to make Johnson County better? What will be your legacy to improving our community? Uh, so there's really an opportunity to help inspire and empower people with knowledge of the past. And that's really what kind of keeps us waking up and coming to work every day. Um, we also like to keep things fresh here. We have a ton of temporary exhibits. Um, my first day was one year ago today, April 6, 2020. It was a really interesting time to start as a museum director. Uh, the museum was closed to the public, courtesy of COVID, and um, it was our first day of furloughs that we were taking for the team. And so when we were on a skeleton crew here trying to figure out how to reopen a museum in a pandemic, going to webinars with museum leaders in China and in Canada and all over Kansas City trying to figure out how long we would sanitize what and what the impact of sanitizers were on this or that or the other, we also thought, what do we as public servants need to do for our community? And as historians, we really have this sense of understanding of context, this, this, this um, ability to bring people together and reflect and give us a sense of existence and time. And so um, we said, it's not on the schedule. We have a, a skeleton crew, but my gosh, we have to tell Johnson Countyans about all the times that they have risen to the challenge to meet hard times in the past. We kept hearing these stories about it being unprecedented times. And we as historians, and Anita, you can agree with this with me if you'd like, um, would be able to sit back and say no. And any other historians on the group, I don't mean to make assumptions that everyone here is not um, a historian, um, but we all know that Johnson Countyans and our nation has gone through pandemics. We've gone through war and natural disasters. And the only thing that's really consistent is that we've consistently overcome it. And so we, we teased out those themes and put that exhibit up in our common space. And to be honest, we haven't been able to take it down. 
and because we're not ready yet. And we figure the time will come when it will feel ready to take it down. But this is available for free to anyone who wants to come to the Arts and Heritage Center common space. And while you're there, you would also get to see art shows that are put up by our fine arts department. Now, if you want to come into the museum and pay the whopping $6 to get in there, you can go ahead and come on downstairs and see our current temporary exhibit, which is called Thrift Style. And it's from Exhibits USA, and which is a national division of the Mid-America Arts Alliance, uh, as well as it's from the Kansas Creative Arts Industries Commission. So, uh, and the National Endowment of the Arts. Sorry, there's a lot of partners in this program. But what it's really about is about thrifting and up upcycling about using commodity bags as raw materials for clothing and goods. My great grandma wore these dresses all the time. And it's just wonderful to see the clothing, the, the hats, bonnets that were made from these materials. Um, there are nearly four dozen examples of the collision between commercial waste and homespun ingenuity in this temporary exhibit, including a few items rarely seen from Johnson County's um, collection. As I told you, we have a huge collection, so we don't show it all, all of the time. We do that through our exhibits and through our behind the scenes tours. Coming up in May, we have uh, Paul McCobb, America's designer. Paul McCobb was a mid-century designer of furniture and furnishings at an accessible price. So a lot of people know Paul McCobb, even if you don't know his name. His products were priced for the middle class, um, mass produced and sold at galleries and department stores across the country. He produced everything from furniture to china, curtains to carpets, tiles to lamps. And uh, this exhibit, Paul McCobb, America's Designer, is comprised almost entirely of pieces from a local collection. We have a local enthusiast here who um, will also be giving a program and I can't wait for you all to meet him. He's, he's very, He's very passionate about Paul McCobb, which is always fun to see someone share their passion. Uh, if you like mid-century modern style, this will be your exhibit, and we invite you to come out and visit us through May, 20, May 22nd through January 7th, 2022. Can we believe we're even saying that at this point? Uh, we also have a ton of programs that go along with our exhibits and then our standing programs. We've got one this week that goes along with the thrift style, the idea of upcycling things. This features local artist, Ben Hawkins, who will actually, um, as I understand it, will be creating art in his studio during our presentation. I'm very um, curious of how that's going to sound and work, um, but I think it will be an interesting evening um, nonetheless. Um, the following week, we have what is one of our pivots of the uh, pandemic age, which was to uh, go virtual on a lot of our programs. And we launched as part of that, the Retro Housewives Guide too. We realized that we don't have a crowd of people in the museum that we can actually take mu the museum program participants to places they normally don't get to go. And so Miss Yvonne, our very own atomic housewife, um, comes and shoots little scenes in the house to show you how it actually be used and then helps give you guidance on um, various topics that would have been important to housewives in the mid-century. So the Kitchen Collectibles will feature a special guest, our very own curator of collections, Ann Jones, to kind of go through some of those collectibles that are in our collection and give you some tips of how you can know whether or not you're finding, what was that piece of china at the estate sale that sold for, was it hundreds of thousands or tens of thousands of dollars? Maybe you too could find something great with that knowledge of the past. Partnerships are at the heart of what we do. We do Once Upon an Artifact with JCCC every year. We're also doing work with the University of Kansas. Um, they have launched a new website called Cold War in the Heartland. And some of the scholars from that project will be sharing with us lessons about Cold War in Kansas. And so we're really looking forward to that program that's made possible through a partnership with the University of Kansas. I told you we don't get to show you everything in the museum, so we have behind the scenes tours on a regular basis. Uh, the next one is coming up, I believe, uh, April 14th. And uh, you get to go with one of our collection staff into the collections room, learn about what we collect, how and why, as well as its importance to our local community. It's always a fun treat. And we do have these um, a, as regular occurrences at the museum and you can learn about them on our website or Facebook. Uh, also, since you all already have an affinity group brought together, we do um, also offer them by request for groups uh, the size 6 to 12 people. So maybe you have a, um, uh, a birthday party that 
well, I would like that birthday party. I don't know if maybe you have someone who's like me, a history nerd who would like a, a history themed birthday party by going on a behind the scenes tour or a group that would make a good fit for that. The pandemic has really showed us that family is so important as we've been spending so much time with them, but maybe you'd like to spend some time outside of the house. Um, with field trips canceled, our education team has started family field trip days. Um, and this next one's at Lanesfield Historic Site, which is another site that we manage through the Johnson County Museum and JCPRD. It's a national historic landmark of a one room schoolhouse. It has a visitor center with an exhibit in it, as well as this um, uh, one room schoolhouse that is just in beautiful shape and been restored on the inside and outside uh, where we do some living history interpretation. Uh, great time to go kind of travel to the southern point of Johnson County and learn more about the history there. This family field trip is just a unique opportunity to do just that, be on a field trip with your family. Um, we've also just this month, we'll start reopening Lanesfield for regular public hours. Um, we had to cut that, excuse me, We had to cut that during the pandemic and um, we're only open for events and uh, for programs. <clears throat> But now um, we're, gonna, we're gonna resume hours on the second Saturday of every month. You can come and visit us from 10 to four and Lanesfield Historic Site is offered for free to the public. So we encourage you to go out and visit that. Other family things are we regularly have retro story times in the exhibits where our um, real housewife talks to kids, which is fun um, as well. Kidscape, um, our wonderful, uh, um, miniature history exhibit for our youngest fans, uh, camps and kids day out. So there's lots of wonderful stuff for families at the Johnson County Museum. But we don't operate on our own. We're part of the culture division of Johnson County Park and Recreation District, uh, <clears throat> where we really focus on art, history, music, theater, and the imagination. Uh, so it's really a cultural community right here in the old King Louis building, and we invite you to come and join us here and do, as we like to say, be something more. Always so much happening through this division. Um, theater in the Park is part of this division, and um, our new season opens up on April 23rd with Songs for a New Now, uh, which is uh, people who are writing songs during the pandemic are put together in this musical review. Uh, with an incredibly fun and light little ditty that kicks it off and ends it. And the reason why I know about this little ditty is because my husband is playing banjo on it. So if you really want to get bonus tips, try and hear the banjo on the cute little piano rag that will be played at the beginning and end of that. Uh, this will be a virtual show, so those of you who are most comfortable in this virtual format or have resigned themselves to sticking with it for a little while longer, um, you can uh, stream that on demand and you can find that information on the Arts and Heritage Center's Facebook page as well as on our website, jcprd.org. Sorry, I had to stop for a second. Is it .org or .com? Mallory, Lisa, Tiffany. We will put it in the chat. Um, dot com. <laughs> dot com. Thank you. Occasionally my newness shows and I forget our website or my phone number and things like that. Apologies there. Um, so that's that show. And then beyond that, we've got Mama Mia returning to theater in the park outside. Curtains will come in June. Cinderella. Halftime Got to Dance. Disney's new newbies. Newsies, excuse me. Uh, the Full Monty. And then we're reviving our innovative theater challenge, which was really cool. Another one of those things that we did during the pandemic, um, which was creating a show kind of um, like producing it in real time. It was, it was a fascinating exercise uh, to see how that goes. And all of that information again is on JCPRD's webpage, which I will put all of that in the links to you all when I'm finished with my presentation. At the Culture Division, we do a lot of stuff inside this building at the King Louis, um, the old King Louis building, but we also really use our division as an opportunity to program out into the community. Um, you'll see that starting with what we're calling History in Our Parks, um, an interpretive marker project where um, the Johnson County Museum is working with partners to create uh, mini museum exhibits in our parks all around Johnson County, um, with our first one getting dedicated April 24th at Barclay Plaza at Shawnee Mission Park. And also we're bringing arts to the community from here with our public art program. 
work on this really began in early 2019 um, with a staff project committee and research of peer agencies. Um, we developed policies for art selection and site selection and a funding plan. And then we were able to create this public art committee. Um, you can learn more about that also on our website, which I will put um, on the web on the chats for you all. Um, but it's undergoing a master plan currently, and it's really looking at how we can just bring that public art to our parks, trails, and facilities to inspire a deeper sense of place and understanding that connection we all have to one another. Our first place where, where the public art will be will be at Meadowbrook Park, and it's slated for the spring of 2022. This is that beautiful park that is a partnership with county, city, and private, and private um, industry all working together. I was just there on Easter. It's a lovely park to, if you haven't been out there to see uh, the public use. And a great time to see it would be this Saturday, April 10th, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., when there will be the Meadowbrook Car Show. Um, an outdoor event with 100 cars, live chalk artists, food trucks. It's free. It benefits the public art program. And as with all things JCPRD, we, um, unless explicitly noted, uh, we encourage social distancing and masks to be observed during this. If you're not sick of all the wonderful things that are happening out in the parks with arts and culture, the Lyric Opera is coming to Meadowbrook Park on April 29th for a short show at 6 p.m. We encourage you to bring your own chair and again, mask and social distancing. And this year, last year, we brought Symphony in the Park to us with the Kansas City Symphony doing park up pop up concerts in parks around Johnson County. And they're coming back again this year, um, like the Lyric Opera. And we have a whole slate of, of performances around Johnson County for you, um, including on May 9th, a petite performance for the little kids, um, which was particularly fun last year. Disclosure, I have a three-year-old, so I do like to go to the little kid ones as much as possible. Um, but they're, they're beautiful evenings, beautiful locations again, free to the public in a way that we are bringing arts, culture, and the humanities out to the public from the fine arts or the culture division of JCPRD. Now, I've shared with you a lot of things that are happening here, but I haven't shared them all with you. So let me just reiterate that we do have Facebook pages and websites for both the Arts and Heritage Center, Theater in the Park, and the museum. And we would encourage you to follow those to hear all of the incredible things because I haven't told you everything that's happening at the um, sites and I could go on for longer, but we must respect time here. So I'll just end with two things. I'm gonna bring it back to history because it starts and ends there for me. First of all, we are living in a historic time. Um, we are trying to collect the present for future interpreters of the past. Um, it's fascinating to think about what curators will want 100 years from now to tell this story of where we are. In fact, it's too big of a, too big of a, topic to even delve into just as museum people alone. So we launched the region's first ever collecting COVID-19 initiative in March of 2020, before I even started here. And that is ongoing. We'll keep this going for several years because we're gonna be unpacking and dealing with this for a few years, um, at least. And so we would encourage you to take time to go on to jcprd.com slash collecting and share your COVID story. And who knows, maybe your mask or hand sanitizer bottle or other ways that you innovated during this time of COVID will become part of the permanent collection of the Johnson County Museum. And if you're ever curious about what's in here and how your stuff could be part of history, again, I really want to encourage everyone to come and see the museum. We have been open safely. I'm going to knock on wood because I feel like we still need to safely since June 1st um, uh, with distancing, hand sanitation, lots of cleaning, especially of Kidscape. Um, and so we are open from Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 4.30, $6 for adults, $5 for seniors, $4 for children. Uh, memberships start at $35. Our memberships are great value for you and gets you unlimited um, museum access for a year, which is wonderful. Um, and again, we are cleaning all the time, masks and social distancing, extra opportunities to practice good high hand, hand hygiene. So we look forward to seeing you. We hope you will come out. Um, please consider, consider us friends in the community and we definitely wanna be in contact with you all going forward. So come out and see us and reach out to me personally anytime you'd like. Mary, I feel like I need to um, get my calendar out and make some markings on there. 
<laughs> I didn't, I didn't realize you guys were having some of those fun programs. That's cool. Well, thank, All you, right. thank you, Dr. McMurray. We love, uh, we've, I, I've scheduled many events uh, and we've attended a lot of presentations. I mean, you had the biggest crowd the day we showed up, but we had like 14 people for the Haskell thing a year ago in January. Oh, so that's amazing. We love, we love you. Oh, well, back yeah. at you, Debbie. I used to work at Smacks when I was in high school. <clears throat> so I love your little Smacks. Uh, your, this, this, I don't know, maybe you'll have a whole, a whole display box eventually. <laughs> the memorabilia from Smacks. That's great. Yeah, thank you. All right. Did we want to take a short break or anything, or do we want to go straight on into the 50 plus offerings? Good to go. We're good to go. All right. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen then. All right, here we are. Usually I'm on the other end of this and not presenting, but holding the virtual presentation. So uh, again, my name is Tiffany Hanna and I am the 50 plus travel coordinator with Johnson County Park and Rec. And um, again, I have with me the Mallory Osher and Lisa Eagle, both coordinators for the 50 plus department. We're gonna kind of switch off throughout this presentation, give you some different voices to listen to. So first of all, thank you again for letting us come and chat with you about what we have to offer. All right, hello, and this is Lisa, and we are inviting you to join our 50 plus family. Throughout this presentation, we're gonna be speaking about the activities, events, and programming that the 50 plus department offers in all of these different areas that are here listed on the screen. So we have got in, from enrichment to technology, arts, nature, outdoor sports, travel. We offer many things, um, different time lengths and different locations, and we'll be speaking to all of that. And this slide introduces our 50 plus staff. So um, there's three of us on the call, but there are many of us in the 50 plus department. We've got our manager, Michelle, the specialists, Carrie and Libby. The 50 plus assistants include Rachel, Sam, Lisa Lane and Misty. And then the coordinators who organize the programming is myself, Mallory and Tiffany. Our programming currently is virtual and in person. We've listed our main programming sites. However, we do sprinkle throughout the county as well. So Meadowbrook Park Clubhouse, a lot of you um, have probably been hearing about it over the last year or two. It's, our, it's a brand new facility in a gorgeous park and our 50 plus department is responsible for managing that building, which is pretty amazing because that means we get first dibs on uh, programming at that beautiful park and using the event space. Um, so we love to host programs at Meadowbrook. I'm over here at the Roland Park Community Center. What used to be Skyline School has um, become a community center the last 30 years. So um, we've got a large multi-purpose room as well as some classrooms that we offer programming here at Roland Park. And Mallory and Tiffany are over at the Matt Ross Community Center, which is um, owned by the city of Overland Park, but 50 plus is there as a guest in the building um, to do their programming for older adults as as well as some uh, fitness and sport activities. Some locations um, additionally are the New Century Fieldhouse and Tomahawk Ridge Community Center. We're, we offer some special event programming as well as our pickleball programs um, happen at those two facilities. So now that you know where we are located at and where we have programming out of, the best ways to find our programming listed uh, would be, one of them would be the best times. And if you're familiar uh, with the best times magazine, this is a publication that comes out every couple of months to most Johnson County households that um, have somebody living there that is over the age of 60. Um, usually we send out a, a, an every four month catalog called my JCPRD activities, which is what you're probably more than likely used to seeing our activities posted in. However, as of this year, we've discontinued that and it is strictly online. Um, however, for the 50 plus programming, uh, we have been able to maintain um, some uh, um, 
programs within that, as well as some articles um, and a um, calendar of events in the back as well. So definitely check out your mailbox, see if you are getting the best times. When you look inside, it's going to stay the same format that you're used to with that, um, the main headings uh, in green, the sports, the enrichment, the special events, travel. Uh, and then under there, the blue are the subheadings that will be alphabetized and then listing the class titles after that. So we've maintained that same format just in a different publication. All right, so another way to find out our programs, so my name's Mallory, and I'm also a 50 plus coordinator. I'm located at Matt Ross. Um, another way to find out about our programs is through our e-newsletter. And so how do you stay up to date with what's going on with 50 plus and all the things that are changing so rapidly? And we have pop-up programs and existing programs and everything seems to be changing. Um, we have a e-newsletter. So right now that e-newsletter is coming to your inbox weekly. And um, sometimes it, it used to be monthly. And then once the pandemic hit, we moved to it weekly, had a bunch of virtual programs and activities on there. Um, to get everybody active, um, finding new things to do when you're stuck at home. Um, and then it's continued to be weekly for now. It may move to bi-weekly. We're just kind of going with the flow of things. And this is where you can find out what's going on in 50 plus. So do we have activities going on this week, next week, or something coming up in a few weeks? This is how you can see what we have going on and um, ways to register for different activities. So um, we will kind of talk to you a little bit about how you can get signed up for that. All right, so let's move on to some of the activities that we have going on in our department and throughout the county. Games, there's always room at our tables. So here in these pictures, you'll see kind of pre-COVID times of some activities that we had throughout the county. Um, at the top, you'll see Matt Ross. Down at the bottom, you'll see um, Roland Park. And then uh, we also have Meadowbrook at the other corner and then a partnership at Cedar Lake Village. So we have different game activities that we typically offer throughout the county. Uh, we have bridge, mahjong, pinochle, dominoes, hand and foot, cribbage. Um, and so these are different activities we typically offer. We also do offer lessons um, for Mahjong and Bridge as well. I know Mahjong is up and running again with uh, lessons and we are working with the county and the health department to get our cards and games programs up and going again for those too. So definitely stay tuned for when we're able to do those drop-in low fee programs again. Bingo, bingo, dauber's up everybody. I know it's a typical 50 plus activity, but it's not your grandma's 50, it's not your grandma's bingo. It's definitely a fun afternoon of sometimes entertainment. You never really know what's gonna happen. You may, maybe a Easter bunny will pop in, maybe Santa will pop in, maybe we'll have some live music, you don't know. But it's just a fun act afternoon activity. We um, usually have a theme for these programs. We usually decorate for the theme and um, there's also prizes. We have sponsors at these programs. So it's great, it's a great way to get out. And maybe this is your first thing that you do with this. It's just a great way to find new people. Sometimes the people that go to our bingo programs, are, um, they attend all of them. So it's a great way to meet new friends or just get out of the house for the afternoon. Right now, um, these programs are socially distanced. People are wearing masks. So this was actually one of the first programs that we were able to get up and running in a safe way. Our social groups um, come and mingle. They are low fee, they're either low fee or free and a drop-in program, um, not a big commitment. So it's come when you've got time. The pictures on the screen, there's a woodworking group that meets in Overland Park. Everybody brings their own supplies and collaborates together on that. And the bottom picture is a knitting group that meets here at Roland Park. 
this group of knitters um, knit hundreds of hats every year and uh, I help distribute them so that they go out to people in need for free and we collect yarn donations all throughout the year. Uh, these ladies will give lessons to anybody who wants to learn or if you're more comfortable knitting at home, but you want to um, help contribute, we can arrange uh, getting the hats dropped off to Roland Park and I can get those out to those in need. So it's just one of our great volunteer give back programs. The New Horizons Band is a special, special program for me. I am so proud of this band. We've got um, 60 to 70 members who would meet in person um, to play their musical instruments. And the median, median age of this group is 70 years old. So these are people who played maybe in junior high and high school and then stopped throughout their adulthood and are now retired and picking instruments back up. Some people have been playing throughout their lives. Other people are picking up an instrument for the very first time. And it's a great collaborative effort with the University of Missouri, Kansas City's Conservatory of Dance and Music. That's where our directors come from. And we've got a few students that are music education students that help out with the band and and they get practice directing and giving some um, support to other band members because the band is so large. And this past year, this group's been meeting virtually. So that's the other picture you're seeing on the screen is our virtual band. They performed a concert and we did a screenshot um, of everyone holding up their instruments. So they learned how to record themselves and uh, access their music digitally and just kept going throughout the pandemic. And we're hoping they'll be back in person soon. We've got a book club picture on the left. Tiffany and I are on that sque screenshot. So it's the Wonderlust Book Club. That was one of our virtual program ideas um, for people who can't travel right now because um, of the current conditions or maybe just physically are limited to traveling, but they love to talk about traveling and read about traveling and can go somewhere through a book. Um, so each month, uh, Tiffany meets with a group over Zoom who read the book on their own and come and have a discussion about it. And those discussions always spiral into different directions. So it's a really fun thing um, that we've done. One example of our virtual programs um, and we've got Painter's Palette uh, on the other side of the slide where individuals bring what they're working on and their paints and they collaborate and paint together and sit and chat while they make their artwork. Technology is our next section. So don't let your smartphone outsmart you. We are all moving forward, getting these devices um, and they can be very complicated to navigate and learn how to use. So this is a picture in the multi-purpose room um, with our instructor, David. He is so patient um, and very knowledgeable. And uh, this is uh, a recent photo. Everybody's spread out six feet apart. They've got their masks on. David has his mask on. And we've got um, a nice big projection screen. Um, so he's able to uh, let everyone know, uh, let, share his screen uh, so everyone can see what they're doing. This is a selling online class, a very popular class because a lot of people um, have items they're looking to get rid of and downsize. Um, so he's uh, letting everyone know the different platforms for selling online and some tips and safety things. We offer cell phone classes, basic um, social media classes, and also one-on-one -on -one tutoring. So if you've got something specific and you wanna just work with David on your own, you can set up a two-hour tutoring session and I'm the one that manages those um, and can get you scheduled for something like that. All right, pickleball. What a funny name. Um, it's also sometimes a funny game. So pickleball, it's kind of a big deal. It is a hugely popular sport for people that have retired. And then now it's kind of moving on from generation to generation. It is one of the most popular growing sports in the nation actually right now. So I believe we be began pickleball here in Johnson County about 10 years ago, maybe longer. Um, but this sport is a great sport for people that have used to play tennis um, and now they're wanting to convert over to a smaller court. Or if you're just trying to get physically active without actually feeling like you're working out, this is my favorite activity because um, I definitely don't feel like I'm working out, but it's fun and it is a workout. So um, here throughout the county, we offer lessons, we offer drop-in play, and we even offer tournaments. So if you think you're too, you're getting too old to start a new sport, 
I have a lady out at New Century that is 93 years old who still plays pickleball. And she didn't start playing, I, I think, until she was like 87, 88. So it's never too late to start. And it's definitely a very fun activity to do. So if you're not laughing during pickleball, I think you're doing something wrong. All right, so if pickleball doesn't seem like the activity for you, we also have several fitness um, activities throughout the county. So some things that we offer is one, one a low fee class that we have is the Arthritis Foundation Exercise Program. So this is a low intensity class um, offered at several different locations, um, all the way from Roland Park out to Gardner. And it's a low, inten low intensity fitness class that you can attend for the first class for free. Um, we also have Tai Chi, chair yoga, and then Roland Park Community Center actually has a fitness center and they have silver sneakers in that. So we have all kinds of different ways to get fit and active throughout the county. special events. So these are programs that we will hold. Usually they're all annual programs. Once a year, we'll do something special. And this first picture is Dance and Dine with the Dixieland Band. So Dixieland Band was actually a little spinoff of our New Horizons Band. A few members decided um, to make their own group and they play Dixieland music and they'll perform for a 50 plus program and we'll serve dinner and have an opportunity to do some dancing in the room as well. We can't wait to have these guys back. Senior Follies, another annual event. It has moved to the Johnson County Arts and Heritage Center at their indoor theater. And Senior Follies is so fun. It's a variety show um, for, uh, for the 50 plus population made up by acts in the 50 plus population. Um, there are auditions and tryouts. So there's these are some hula dancers dancing, music, comedy, ventriloquist, um, whatever your talent is, you audition, and then um, there's a practice time, and there will be a show, and uh, we've even had to do uh, multiple showings because there is there are so many people who want to come and see it. The tea dances, um, they're not back yet, um, but when they do return, they'll be at Meadowbrook Park Clubhouse. It's a live band. Um, they were previously um, every Friday and it was just a drop-in fee and you can come and dance and as you can see um, a lot of the dancers like to get dressed up and fancy that uh, these tea dances were the highlight of their week so we're looking forward to those coming back and it's a lot of fun uh, if you'd like to join in on that. The Valentine's Day dinner and bingo and is, is an event that I host here at Roland Park um, this is a mother and a daughter that came to the event. It's open to singles, couples, friends, anybody can join us. And uh, we decorate the room very nicely and have some prizes uh, that are on the Valentine's Day theme, such as manicures, pedicures, chocolates, restaurant gift cards. Uh, we'll set up a little photo booth. It's always a great time. Live Well, Age Well is the largest event that our 50 plus department puts on. It is um, a big event, think of like a big expo where you can learn about businesses and services geared towards aging adults and their loved ones. It's free to attend. There's a vendor fair. We've got health screenings. You can see that in the top right picture, education seminars. That's the bottom picture. Um, and then the top left is people visiting the vendors. Uh, we'll play bingo and have door prizes throughout. So uh, the, these pictures were all when they were in person. Last year, we did go virtual for 2021 in the fall. We're um, still making our plans. So as soon as we know what we'll do for um, Live Well, Age Well, we'll be sure to get our flyer out to Debbie or whoever's coordinating with your group. Um, so you can all come out and see um, what we'll have to offer for our Live Well, Age Well event. Step into Wellness um, has been going on for over 20 years. Um, it's now moved to Meadowbrook Park Clubhouse. We invite uh, participants to come and walk with us. There'll be a one mile or a three mile track. We will have some mini fitness demonstrations. You see that on the left picture, that is some chair yoga going on. 
Um, and then we have either a breakfast or a picnic lunch outside at the picnic tables. And there will be a guest speaker that uh, changes every year who we invite to have a guest speaker. Um, and we'll have a lot of wellness tips. And it's just a great time to get outside and meet other people focused on uh, keeping their health and wellness in check. All right, so if you enjoy travel, we definitely have plenty of adventures planned throughout the year for you. Uh, we also uh, plan different types of opportunities that would fit all kinds of schedules. So for instance, if you are looking for a half day um, excursion, we would take our district vehicles out to places like um, maybe Emporia or Parkville and check out a booming downtown area. Um, if your schedule allows you to go out for a whole day excursion and you're looking to possibly go to Springfield and, and take a safari there or go to Omega and check out the Land of Oz, we will uh, load up on some beautiful coach vehicles and head out of town for the day. Uh, that one is an all-inclusive trip, the, the full day trips all inclusive. Uh, if you are interested in a longer trip and your schedule allows, we go all over the world with 50 plus. Um, we've gone to Egypt and we've gone to Italy and we've gone to Costa Rica. And on the ticket this year, we have Mackinac Island and Spain and Morocco and Ireland, South Africa. So tons of great places scheduled. Uh, the picture up here at the top with the ladies picking up the information, that is a travel show that we hold three times a year where uh, it, right now it's currently held at Meadowbrook. And you can come and listen to all of the different um, itineraries we have planned and destinations and pick up all the information you'd like as well as register if you're interested. If you enjoy being out in nature, we also offer uh, adventure hikes and walks uh, and also adventure, pro um, sorry, nature programs. Uh, so this are, these are more of like a natural trail that we might uh, hike along more of an adventurous, rugged terrain. However, we also do some moderate and easier paths as well. So again, really catering to a wide variety of people virtual programming. So 2020 brought us some challenges as to how we could keep uh, engagement high and um, interest high. And we knew that virtual programming was where we were going to need to land. So uh, we've actually had a really great time doing this. And um, we've been able to, like Lisa had mentioned earlier, offer a book club, a travel themed book club. Uh, we've been able to do some arts and crafts, as well as uh, games, of course, virtual bingo has been an a, a blast. Uh, so we've been able to offer those. We also have presentations by subject matter experts who have come in. Uh, we've had um, astrologists, astronomists, and we partner with the K-State Extension, who comes and talks to us about some fantastic gardening programs, uh, like raised vegetable beds are kind of coming up. Let's see here, we've got fruit trees on the list for programs. We've done perennials, all sorts of great things. We've also had museum presentations uh, from around, not only from around town, but also um, we just had one from St. Louis, the Kaplan Feldman Holocaust Museum presented today. Uh, we have many more coming up. We have a KU geologist on um, uh, coming up as well, who's going to talk to us about Kansas and how it was formed and the fact that we used to be beachside once. We have a Western series coming up that will talk about how Hollywood um, kind of pairs next to um, not only entertainment, but also history. So we're really excited for those. We send out um, flyers that give you information on some upcoming programs, as well as you can find these in our e-newsletters, just like we were talking about earlier and in the best times. All right, some resources we offer here throughout the county to Two big ones that we actually offer is the AARP Smart Driver. Um, right now, AARP is not operating, um, but we are hoping to get that up and running soon. But that's a great way to sometimes if um, you may be able to lower your rates on your insurance by taking this two hour, four hour, excuse me, I've been out of it too long, <laughs> four hour AARP Smart Driver class. So that's a great 
program that you can um, take throughout the county. Also, we have Kansas Legal Services, Legal Aid. Um, they meet here at Matt Ross Community Center. Um, that is every, Wednesday, every third Wednesday of the month, you must have an appointment. They also have appointments at um, Roland Park Community Center as well. I think that's every other month on Thursdays. And so you also have to do appointments for that. But that's a great opportunity um, for free legal, legal aid. So there are 30 minute appointments and you just have to call and we'll schedule that appointment for you. And they're able to help you out with whatever you need. All right. Oh. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Say all right. Who's ready to join? Have we piqued anybody's interest yet? Just yet? Yeah. Yeah. Shaking my head. Seeing some hand raised up there. Give me a raise the roof if you're ready to join. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So now I'm going to tempt you even more. So here on your screen, you're going to see a QR code. These things have become quite popular at restaurants. So if you um, open up your phone, I'll give you some time to open up your phone if you want. You might be using your phone, so that's possible too. And if you open up your camera, oops, somebody's calling me right now. <laughs> if you open up your camera and you put your camera right on that QR code, you'll have something pop up that says open jcprd.com. And that should take you directly to our JCPRD um, website. And then from there, that'll take you directly to a form center that will get you signed up for our e-newsletter. So that uh, weekly e-newsletter that comes to your email, that's a direct link to sign up for that. So you can sign up specifically just for 50 plus stuff. There's also stuff um, throughout Johnson County. And there's also, you can sign up for specifically stuff for the Arts and Heritage Center as well. So that's a great way to find out what we have going on because there's a lot of it. Didn't mean to steal your thunder there, Mallory. I, know, <laughs> I was ready to jump right in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, so our webpage is another great place to get some information on programming, and it is jcprd.com. And I'll just run you through a quick uh, tutorial here. Normally, I would share my screen and walk you through it step by step, but instead, I've taken some screenshots here, and I'll just kind of show you what to expect. Um, there's two ways you can look for programs. One is browsing, and the other is searching. Uh, so if you're going to browse, you kind of just want to see overall what JCPRD 50 plus has to offer. You're going to want to come straight up here on our homepage to the activities and just hover over the activities um, bar. Uh, then the, the blue box will come up and just move your cursor straight over here and you can pick any one of these types of programs that we offer. Um, then from there. If you're interested in searching, you know maybe the title of the program you're interested in. Somebody has told you that there is a walk or um, a particular special event that they want you to come to with them. You're going to want to search. So if you go to the same jcprd.com, scroll down to about the middle of the page, you'll see these six circles here. You're going to go to the activity search. When you click that, you'll it'll take you to this page over here on the right hand side. And this box down here will be where you will put in those keywords that you're looking for, whether it be a walk or your special event or a bingo that you know the theme of. And then um, you'll hit search. That'll also, you can filter it too. There are some filters down here. So if you want specifically to look for 50 plus, you can change those down here. But once you find that, hit search and it'll take you directly to our registration page. And it'll tell you that they found 10 matching walks. Mm -hmm. Here it'll show you um, that this, well, at the time <laughs> it was coming up, the Republican River Walk. It'll tell you the date, the fact that it's a 50 plus walk. It's not something for children. Um, so this is where you can find some more information. If you hit fee details right over here, it'll tell you how much the course is, if there is a fee. And then if you hit enroll now, it'll take you directly to this portion of our registration page. This is our account set up. So if you don't have an account with us, or if you don't know if you have an account with us, you can try entering in your email and see if it remembers you or, or recognizes you rather. Uh, if it does not, you can just come down here to the bottom and hit create a new account and go ahead and follow the prompts to create your own password and make your own account. That way you can sign up for things yourself. 
course, we're always happy here in the 50 plus department to help you register or answer any questions about that. So if you're interested in being a speaker, I know it, a lot of you, if not all of you, were or are educators. And if you're interested in um, educating past the classroom, we're always looking for volunteers to come and speak to whatever um, subject matter experts you are, uh, even if it's a hobby and you know a lot about it and you'd like to share that passion with us, we're happy to chat with you about possibly being a speaker for some of our virtual or in-person programming. And of course, uh, anytime you give us a call, you'll more than likely get one of us, if not one of the, the gals that you saw earlier in our staff, in our department rather. Uh, these are the three coordinators. We're the ones that would set up those appointments if you were interested in um, uh, taking some time to share your expertise with us. And something special that we'll leave you with is that this year is extra special because 50 plus is celebrating our 50th anniversary. So we have some exciting um, challenges for you. And some of these things, we have cards and these, on, these are online or if you come into any of our facilities, you can pick up or see these 50 things that we're asking you to do. You can document the ones that you've done, like tell a 50 plus staff a story about your past or attend a virtual class, share a picture of yourself or one of our, in one of our beautiful parks or trails, download a new book from the Johnson County Library, or create an emergency preparedness kit. There's lots of things. These are just a few uh, that you can do. And when you um, when you document them, you can turn that in to be entered for a drawing to win a gift card. And here is the list of um, suggestions that we have that you can do. And again, this can be found on our web page. Uh, you can also come into any of the facilities where we can print you one out. And that is our presentation for the day. And I think we have a giveaway too, Lisa. We do. So we are very excited to have you come and join us. So we've got a $10 gift card to Johnson County Park and Rec. It can be used anywhere um, throughout our district in any sort of program or entrance fee. Um, and we would really like for you to come and join us. So I'm seeing um, that there's 12 people from your organization on the call right now. So um, I'm going to ask Mallory to pick a number and I'm going to um, just count the little boxes I see in our gallery screen. And that person will win this gift card. I'll have you um, give me your address and I can pop it in the mail or you could come pick it up from our site. So we will touch base. So Mallory, what's a number between one and 12? I'm going to go with today's date. So I'm going to go with six. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Joan, you are Joan's iPad. <laughs> you are the lucky winner of this gift card. So I'm going to um, chat with you real quick and get your information and we can uh, organize picking up this gift card. And Tiffany, while you were speaking, um, there was a request to go back to that QR. So if you don't mind oh, screen sure. sharing. Yeah, and absolutely. I'll, yeah. And while you're pulling that up, um, if you were struggling with it, so um, on your smartphone, you do have to have a smartphone, um, you open up the camera. And as soon as you place your camera over the QR code, a little box is going to pop up and you have to tap that box. Don't like ignore it and tap somewhere else. It goes away. If you did that, go, go back on your phone, open your camera again, and you just put your camera right over it. Um, and then a, for me, I've got an Android. It's a white box. It says webpage. Tap here to go to jcprd.com. You'll tap there. And then that brings you to all of the different newsletters. You can click and sign up for whichever one you want. And ours, the um, Explore 50 Plus is the 50 Plus one specifically we were talking about in this um, presentation. And you'll also see Johnson County Arts and Heritage Center is on there as well. So if you want to get the museum information that Mary was talking about, um, I see that Johnson County Museum's there as well. So sign up for all, some, whatever, whatever you like. Uh, in uh, the last few minutes, if you've got any questions, please feel free to unmute or go ahead and put them in the chat. I think there were some um, in the chat box here. I'll go back to those. Let's see here. It's thinking, computer's thinking. Mm -hmm. It's thinking for a long time. Or do you have access to the chat box? I do. Um, we had a few things that Mary posted. Oh, where is Landfield, Lanesfield Museum located? And let me see if Mary answered 
Yeah, I think it's Edgerton. Correct. And I put the oh, um, she's got the link in there for you. Yep. Okay, so we answered that question. Yeah, I think that was all that we've had so far. Perfect. I saw the seven, and I didn't. I hadn't opened them up yet. So good. Were there any other questions? Not a question, but a comment. I've. I went on a number of the uh, 50 plus travel, day long travel ones, and they're, they're excellent. I, I can't wait for circumstances to be such that we can resume those again. I agree, Jonathan. I'm so ready for this to happen. I think a lot of people are. So um, the e-newsletter is the best place to keep up to date with uh, those openings as well uh, as the itineraries. So uh, just as soon as we know, we are going to let all of the patrons know just when those have opened up and begin again. So we're talking, we're talking about it. <laughs> and of course, there'll be lots of protocol in their code protocol that will be doing it the safest way possible. Can I make a comment also? Oh, please. Uh, uh, those, that presentation was incredible. And uh, I'm so happy that I live in Johnson County and I'm over 50. Uh, you provide so much for us. Um, I, I wanna say, uh, Mary, uh, because I'm more uh, drawn towards history, you didn't have time to go through the magnificent historical collection you have of Johnson County. And if you want to, it, it's endless and so well done. And thank you so much for your, all your work. That means a lot coming from you, Anita. And I will remind you all that behind the scenes tours are a great opportunity to come and see that um, incredible collection. And I want to say the holidays, the holidays oh, of yes. art and heritage is my absolute, I, I think about it every holiday season where I need <laughs> to go back and see it because they decorate the house for the holidays in exactly the way it would have been. So it's just really neat to see. Well, I want to thank you all for the presentation. I, there was just, I, I'm glad we're recording this so that we can rewatch it. There's just so much to take in. There's so much going on that, um, yeah, we, we need to look at it again. But great job. I'm really impressed. Well, thanks Thank again for Debbie having too. us. Come say hi. Yes. <laughs> right. We're there. You're one of my, I plan events for the Retirees Association, myself and others, but you all are my favorites. Like I'm like, look <laughs> at what you all are doing. You take advantage of it for sure. Great job. Well, thank, thank you, you for having us. <laughs>